Let me be clear, I normally do not like lower anterior lingual bar fixed retainers, but every now and then they come in handy and are needed. This is one of those cases. This patient had mobile, you can see, bone loss. In my opinion, if you take it, most of the time, if you take out one lower anterior tooth, you consider taking out all four of them. You can't put a bridge on those teeth, a conventional bridge, because the teeth are so small. If you prepare a millimeter and a half around each tooth, you end up with toothpicks or matchsticks. If you've got good bone around the adjacent teeth and just bad bone around one teeth, you can place a Maryland bridge. And I, you've, I've got videos on how to do those, but usually bone is compromised around several of the lower anterior teeth, so you end up taking them all out, placing either an implant supported bridge or a double, a, a fixed bridge that's double abutted on each side. So with this woman, it just wasn't appropriate for her temperament and circumstances to take these teeth out. And you think if you lose more bone here, the worst that could happen is that you compromise the bone between two teeth and lost two teeth. I tell patients if you've got bone loss between two teeth, it's like this is my house and this is your house and we've got a fence between us and I've got termites on my side of the fence. Well, you've got a termite problem also even if you don't realize it. So this bone stabilizes this tooth, which is a reason you sometimes take out a tooth that has bone loss on that tooth because you don't want to lose this tooth. But in this case, this patient was elderly. It just wasn't appropriate to go through a big restorative process. So my feeling was a deep cleaning and a lingual bar and three month recalls and good home care was appropriate for this patient. So let's talk about how we did it. Now, I'm not an orthodontist. So I'm not as good as this at this as orthodontists are, but I watched YouTube videos and saw what the technique was and my assistant and I placed this lingual bar. This is just orthodontic wire and you want to start with a model and you put that on the lingual of the lower anterior teeth and kind of press it in and form it generally to the teeth. Now you can see there's some crowding here and this tooth is mobile. So you may even polish a little of the lingual of these teeth with a football diamond just so there's not a huge change between this tooth and this one or this one and this one. You want it to be generally smooth. It's hard to make that wire fit the teeth on the lingual if there's a big roller coaster going on back here. So get the length and then get it approximately correct. You can torque it a little bit. Now I'm wiping the teeth, the lingual of the teeth, with isopropyl alcohol just to clean them real well. Now you can see we've got a little divergence right here, so I polish that with a football diamond. Then I'm going to place 38% phosphoric acid on the lingual of the teeth. See how this tooth is mo mobile. And so I, I really like talking to you about these philosophic dilemmas because Dr. Pank used to always say you have to consider the temperament and circumstances of the patient. This patient had some dementia. She was older. It just wasn't in the cards to take teeth out and do a big restorative procedure. So what we're trying to do is preserve these teeth, hopefully, for the rest of her life. And so it seemed like this was a real indication for a fixed lingual bar. Now, one of the problems I've got with fixed lingual bars on the lower anterior teeth is I get why orthodontists place fixed lingual bars. The kid is not mature enough to wear his retainer all the time, and he doesn't wear his retainer after orthodontics when he's in his teen years. The teeth get crooked and the mom comes in and says, wham, 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 my kid's teeth are crooked and wants the orthodontist to do the ortho again for free. And he's just going, okay, I'll fix that. I'll put a fixed retainer on so he doesn't have to be responsible enough to wear his removable appliance. I get that. I would probably do the same thing. But oftentimes they forget to tell the patient as you get older and you're more mature, you're more mature and you're able to remember to wear your removal retainer every night when you're sleeping, that bar needs to come off because you can't floss the teeth 
appropriately and can't clean them appropriately. So people tend to uh, have calculus and plaque build up on the teeth and they get periodontal disease and what have you. So you really need to show people how to clean them. If you do have a lingual bar on the lower anterior, fixed lingual bar on the lower anterior teeth, that's something that often is lost in the translation is as you get older and more mature, you gotta take this off and get a removal retainer, which you wear at night while you're sleeping as you wear your night guard. You wear the night guard to keep you from grinding your teeth away. So this is the sequence. Get the bar ready, then rinse the 38% phosphoric acid, then put a two by two down, and you'll blow that off on the two by two. Then this is, this is the technique. You loop this floss, wax floss, pretty thick wax floss, and pop it between those teeth, between each of the teeth with the loop in it. So you put that in first with the loop on the lingual. Then you take your wire and thread it through those loops. It's really an ingenious technique and line it up on these teeth. It's very important that you've cut the wire and kind of bent it to conform to the teeth. And if you have any real divergent areas of the teeth, you want to smooth those out just a little bit before you get to this point. So I haven't cured anything yet. Now this is harder than you think to do all this because you've got an assistant here in the front that's pulling these things tight to make them as tight as you can get them against the teeth. So I elected not to put any filled resin or flowable composite on the teeth before I pulled them tight. There's just too much going on. You're trying to keep the saliva off of it because if you get the saliva on it, it's going to contaminate the bond. So it was enough just to put the primer adhesive and get the wire in place, pulling the floss tight. So see, we, Luis has pulled this tight on the teeth, and now I'm gonna squirt the flowable composite on the teeth. Probably in a perfect world, you've got a little composite on the tooth side of the wire, but this works well. Just put some on there so you can stabilize it. Then we're gonna come back and polish that filled resin once we cure it. Then you're going to cure it with a curing light. Then you'll add a little bit more just to idealize it. And then you can cure it with a football diamond or a chamfer diamond or just, the, I haven't polished anything yet. So you can use a flame shaped diamond. You can use a chamfer diamond or football diamond and contour it. You can also use a polishing strip. Then I'm going to come back with these Shofu rubber wheels and polish it nice and smooth. And then you're going to show the patient how to use these. I like the Oral-B proxa brushes, which is you can change these heads. It's real easy to stick it in there and bend it, and then they can show them how to get between there. And just use a proxy brush with some either chlorhexidine or mouthwash on the proxy brush and keep them clean. Now this is not as good as flossing, but it's effective in these cases. The only part they can't get is right here. I want to put the wire up on the tooth incisely. I don't want to put it way down at the gum line because it's harder to get the proxy brush in there. You want some space to get the proxy brush in. Here's before and after, no mobility. So what do you tell the patient after you've done this? You say, it's not a perfect world. This is not ideal. What we're trying to do is save these teeth as long as we can. You may lose them one day and then we'll have to go to plan B, which could be extracting the teeth and doing something a lot more involved and a lot more expensive. So this is a good intermediate step and this may be the only thing we need to do. You may lose some bonded composite over time. You know, try not to bite anything real hard with your front teeth. I tell patients, even with natural teeth, don't bite anything harder than a tuna fish sandwich or a hamburger with your front teeth because the angle is bad. You're pushing out on those maxillary anterior teeth. And if you've got compromised mandibular anterior teeth, that makes it even, even worse. So 
people can live a good life if they don't bite anything harder than a hamburger or tuna fish sandwich with their front teeth. Cut it up, pizza, corn on the cob, apples. You don't have to bite that stuff with your front teeth. I see two or three patients a week with chipped natural front teeth, especially if they don't have a knife or they grind their teeth and they sharpen their teeth and they break those edges off, biting something hard. And they'll say, I was just biting an apple or biting corn on the cob. Don't do that. So watch my video on how to keep your teeth for a lifetime and you will save yourself, if you're a normal person, not a dentist, you'll save yourself a lot of money and duress over time if you do it like that. How to, how to keep your teeth for a lifetime. That's the dental minute. These techniques work and they work every time. Are you feeling stuck? You know you have more to offer and you can elevate higher in your dentistry practice, but you just don't know how to do it. Well, great news. DentistryMasterclasses.com is here for you. At DentistryMasterclasses.com, Dr. Kerberth is offering his greatest work and his best cases. Here is everything included when you subscribe to DentistryMasterclasses.com. You will get incredible comprehensive cases not seen in Dental Minute videos, an organized library of all the Dental Minute videos, and the Dentistry Masterclasses, comprehensive cases for study and reference. You will get before and after pictures of Dr. Kepper's fantastic restored cases. And guess what? All of this is 40 bucks a month. That's right, 40 bucks a month. This is an opportunity you cannot miss. Go to dentistrymasterclasses.com and subscribe today.